All right, this is a response to Gary uh, Gloom Boom Doom, I think, probably on this one. Your response, Gary, to Zinnia Jones, Z Jump TV's uh, video, I'm Not a Symptom, your, your response to that. I've only watched about half of it, Gary, and my computer crashed at that point. But quite frankly, uh, I'd had about enough of it. I will watch the rest of it and maybe uh, finish off my response. But I just think it's a horrible video you've made, there, Gary. Absolutely horrible for all kinds of reasons. I mean, I know your heart's in the right place because I know you're a good guy, but you come off like a twat in this video for reasons which I will try to explain, but I might not be able to make a very good job of it. Okay, to continue, lots of stuff there about normal and abnormal, lots of stuff about difference, lots of stuff about pathologizing, and in no particular order we go. Okay, you're talking about some kind of speculations about the genetic origins of homosexuality. You know, how on earth could, could homosexuals possibly emerge in a, in a Darwinian evolutionary environment when they obviously have no reproductive advantage, and you speculate which is this idea of gays as kind of super bisexuals. You know, these people, some people have got so, so overflowing with sexual energy that women, just women aren't enough for them. They've got to, like, fuck other boys and they've got to fuck trees and they've got to fuck mud and you name it. You know, it's uh, bullshit. I call it bullshit on that bogus fucking Procrustean uh, fucking just so story. Sorry, mate. That's just not going to wash it. Um, no, it's just bullshit. And then all this stuff about wheels in the right place, you know, you God's sake. Um, yeah, so this, this genetic evolutionary argument for, for what you refer to as the abnormality of, of homosexuality. I mean, there are, there are some speculative evolutionary accounts which make, make, make kind of sense of it. The one that you suggested is nowhere in the running. Uh, and quite frankly, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, I thought we'd thrashed this one out fucking ages ago. Nature, Mr. All Not, is what we are putting this earth to rise above. We're not tied to history. What the fuck are we doing looking for evolutionary origins? We don't look there for morality, do we? I mean, do we do, do we quote Franz de Waal, you know, when to be serious, mentions Franz de Waal, and how the empathy and altruism exist in the natural animal kingdom, and, we sh and they presumably also exist in evolutionary history of hominids. Do we say, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good reason to have morals? No, we don't, because it's bullshit. It's true, but it's irrelevant because we are the signifying monkeys who can make our own choices. We are free, at least in theory, from those fucking bogus ideas. And the same thing applies here. You know, you can't apply to one, not the other, Gary, can you? Let's face it. Fuck, it's tired of rain. Anyway, um, yeah, and then you give these accounts of this, trying to justify this abnormality thing, you know, and you keep swinging between calling things like abnormality and deviance and... And then pretending it's like, but I don't mean anything bad by it, but you do. You know, you really do. You know, a five-wheel car. I mean, the reason why a five-wheel car is fucking weird is it doesn't work right. You know, it's clearly a fuck-up. And, and that's pretty much the language you use. If you see dogs humping, you say, you think, oh, that's a bit fucked up. Well, you would, and you'd be a twat and an idiot for thinking it, because it wouldn't be fucked up. A certain percentage of dogs are, uh, have, uh, you wouldn't call them gay, but are have homosexual relationships with the dogs. A certain percentage do that. A certain perception of ducks, a certain percentage of rabbits. There's a normal distribution of gay practices in the animal kingdom, different for different species. But that's a normal distribution of gay activity. It just is, you know? So whilst you, from your limited experience, or me from my limited experience, might look at a dog doing that, I think that's a bit weird. That's my stupidity and my ignorance, because I don't have access to the dog population. I don't have access to immediate access to statistics, and I can't see that what I'm actually looking at is part of a normal distribution of a certain kind of activity. And it's the same thing with um, with uh, gay practices amongst humans, isn't it? You know, there's a certain percentage between 10 and 12 percent of humans are uh, uh, are gay, and that's uh, a normal distribution. And when something falls outside that norm, we think it's something a bit weird. We assume the sociological or political factors or something going on. You know, if we go to Brighton in England, if we go to Brighton and walk up the seafront, there's a lot more gay men in Brighton. You think, oh, that's a bit weird. And then you think, oh, yeah, actually, they come on here on holiday. It's great. It's a really friendly place. The bar's fantastic. Or um, or if you go to Iran and you find out that there are no homosexual men at all in Iran, apparently, you think, oh, that's a bit weird. And it would be a bit weird because there was a normal distribution in the populations. So if you think that male dog something is a bit fucked up, uh, you're wrong. It just isn't. Unless, like, every male dog was doing it, or no male dogs would do it. That would be fucked up. It would be fucked up statistically. Not an abnormal distribution. 
Uh, and of course, the second thing, just to return to this, is it wouldn't fucking matter anyway, even if dogs were fucked up, because we're not dogs. Nature, Mr. All Not, etc., etc. All right, next point. Uh, Anxiety disorder, you mentioned at one point, everybody gets pathologized. Everybody says, oh, that happened to you, it's a bit fucked up, isn't it? Yeah, everybody gets pathologized, yeah, that's right. They do occasionally at times wonder what happened to make you the way you are, to make me the way I am. Why are you wearing glasses, Fred? Did you wank too much when you were a kid? You know, why are you wearing glasses? Did you, did you not eat enough carrots as a child? Did, you, did your mother give birth in a brightly lit operating theater? You know, you know, yeah, of course, everybody gets pathologized and it's stupid. And it's stupid because it, you're trying to, um, it, and asking those questions is stupid. I mean, this is the thing about asking questions. Asking questions is fine. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. But asking stupid questions is stupid. And the kind of questions you're talking about there, Gary, is stupid because you're asking statistical questions of individuals. You know, you're asking questions about the normal distribution of a certain character trait in, in, in a, that has a normal dis, uh, distribution in the population. And you're asking for one individual for their narrative to explain that. And you're not going to, you don't get that information. You just don't get it. It's like asking me, why have I got white skin? Well, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Perhaps mum made too much bleach on my face when I was a kid. You know, it doesn't make any sense to ask that question. Um, and in fact, asking that question is something like the thing you're talking about. And uh, later on, you compare it with uh, beaters grow up to be beaten, people who are knocked about when they're kids. You know, I mean, that just really plays into that... Um, old story about you know where these things come from of, of, of abuse doing child abuse doing childhood being linked to what kind of a, an orientation you have when you're older and you know that is like 19th century sorry it just is and you're also linking it to other kinds of deviancy sexual deviancy you know if you even if you accept the idea of sexual deviancy and many people wouldn't but if you did then and you're comparing it to things like necking yourself with shower curtains pedophilia are we really saying that homosexuality is similar to paedophilia and auto-asphyxiation with shower curtains? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, then you start using this word abnormal. You know, it's a bullshit word, you know, because you're not talking about something abnormal, you're talking about something that's a minority. And there's a big difference between abnormal and minority. You know, abnormals... Um, takes a set of behaviours and, you know, sometimes for good and sometimes bogus, for bogus reasons, identifies this set of behaviours as normal, yeah? And then things which lie outside that, of course, are abnormal. But something like homosexuality, first off, it isn't a deviancy. We should expect to see it in the population and we should expect to see it, as I've said before, as a, in a normal distribution. So, you know, mi mixing up abnormality with minority is really toxic. Sorry, it just is. Uh, yeah, I don't know much more I can say on this. Yeah, pathologizing. Terrible. Really bad. I mean, this thing about, I mean, I mean, what's quite frustrating about this video, Gary, is that, is that uh, it comes quite hard, uh, close on the heels of the discussion that you and I had, and other people, uh, Piro, and one or two other people, about value quite recently. About value and the, uh, and the, and the, uh, the, the role of value and being able to evaluate has played in the history of our species and the history of species of animals like ours. And that's really important. You know, what we I thought we kind of got to there was understanding of value, that term, as a felt difference. You know, a felt difference. You, you a, a tiny little squirmy animal, it's got hardly anything at all, it's just got little sensors on its head which can tell the difference between light and dark. But it has a felt response to that because if it's in the light, it fries in the sun, that's painful. So this, this difference that it can distinguish between light and dark is given a value. It's not just difference. It's discrimination with value judgments attached to light and dark. So it seeks the shade because the shade is valuable. Yeah? And all discrimination is like that in sentient species. You know, we, we, we are the, the sons and daughters and grandsons and granddaughters of those simple creatures who can do those things. And our, every moment of our sentience is built out of being able to make distinctions and be able to make, and the inevitable value judgments that fall either side of a distinction. Because, you know, and this is primary mathematics, but it also comes out of uh, information theory and all those kind of things. Is, you know, there is no difference without difference in value. It's the, the, the differences are differences that make a difference. That's, that's kind of how it works. So, um, 
So all these times that we're making distinctions between this and that, we're also making value differences between this and that. And that's something we have to be really, really careful about. And if we're doing that to be with people, if we're saying, oh, I see a difference. There's a guy there who's uh, got long hair uh, and uh, uh, who appears to be homosexual. That, that, that's, that's, a dis that's a difference. And what are we going to do with that difference? We have to recognize that we're doing something with it. And I think one of the worst things you can do with that is pathologize that difference. You say that difference is a sickness. That difference is a deviation from the norm. That difference is the result of a misfiring. And I'm borrowing that from Dawkins, by the way. It makes a very similar error um, in one of his earlier books. And misfiring. You know, it's as if, as if evolution's got this target in mind, this teleological end point. You know, and you can shoot towards it. Sometimes a gun goes off by accident. We all know that evolution isn't teleological. It doesn't have end points in mind. It just makes contingent. Anyway, that's a bit of a deviation itself. But you know what I mean? It's like... If you're going to if you're going to if you're going to say look we are made out of values our sentience our feelings our ability to make judgments all this stuff is built out of the fabric of of making discriminatory value judgments and and seeing difference and feeling difference all around us and this pattern of variation that we that allows us to choose the good things over bad things if we if we accept that then to not apply it in a case as, as significant as this it's just a huge oversight um, yeah, and saying, you know, well, that's a bit different, is interesting, but then we should immediately be catching ourselves and saying, is it different? Is it a difference that makes a difference? Is it a difference that sets it outside the norm, or is it part of a normal distribution? And most crucially, is it a difference that's based on pathology? Because as soon as you're down the pathology route, then you are back into the throwing homosexuals into prisons and giving them electroshock treatment, like Alan Turing or whatever it is called. Yeah, very disappointing, Gary, I'm disappointed. You need to have more homosexual dreams and fantasies, perhaps. That'd be good. Actually, next, next videos, we should dress as girls. What do you think? You do it first. You, you copy me in the last one. I promise I'll copy you. Wear a long wig, yeah, I can do a really girly video. And then go and, like, hump another bloke. I won't copy that bit. But that'd be, make a funny video. Anyway, yeah. Um, ooh. Apart from anything else, you're giving cover to some real twats. I mean, look at the comments section. You've got some real arseholes following you around there saying, oh, yeah, I agree with this guy. I agree with this guy. I wouldn't take it up the arse either. It's disgusting. <laughs>